the Armageddon games from the finals of the Champions Chess Tour, they are absolutely insane. So many brilliant moves, so many dramatic blunders in just one game. It just happens because white needs to play for a win, having extra time on the clock, black is satisfied making a draw. These odds they create such a tension on the board, forcing players to take more risks. Look at this game between Maxime Fasche Lagraf and Hikaru Nakamura. The game is just absolutely insane, something I have not seen earlier this year. So let's have a look together and enjoy the drama on the board. Maxime Fasche-Legraf playing with the white pieces. It's the survival bracket, which means that the player goes to the knockout stage. Maxime starts with the move 1 e4, and look what Hikaru does in the opening. He played the move e5, knight f3, knight f6. We have the pattern of defense. And if you watched my channel earlier this week, after knight takes e5, you remember that Hikaru played knight takes e4 also in the match with Magnus Carlsen. Magnus played here the move d3, didn't get an advantage out of the opening, but he squeezed his opponent in an endgame. Beautiful stuff, you should check it out. Maxime had prepared it for sure, or at least one of his seconds. Played here the move queen e2, it's the main move. And now look, queen e7, queen takes e4, d6, Black is going to regain the piece. And I mentioned in the other video that d4 is now the most common move. But MVL played here this move, f4. This is a really sharp move. After pawn takes on e5, you do take back with the f pawn and white is a pawn up. But the king is open. Let's see what's gonna happen. And definitely this is also what Hikaru was still familiar with. He played this move, f5 attacking the queen and of course taking the pawn en passant is not a good move there's queen takes e4 and black wins the queen take it back white should move the queen instead the queen went to e3 and now the knight went to c6 and the knight comes to c3 with the idea maybe to come to d5 that could be a nice square to attack the queen now black can just take the pawn back but in a position after the queens are coming off the board it seems to me that white is a bit better here having a nice extra pawn in the center versus the pawn on f5 white's pieces can quickly be developed i think mvl likes this position as for sure so after knight c3 hikaru played this move knight b4 look at this black is threatening to take on c2 with a huge fork he is about to win the queen so white is kind of forced here to play the move king d1, giving up the right to castle. The white king will stay in the center and that means that play will become much sharper very soon. Bishop goes to e6, blocking the pawns in the center. But now after a3, white is kicking the knight away. The knight goes back to c6 and white brings out the bishop to b5, pinning the knight on c6. And look now, it's just getting more insane. g5, black is... Bring up its g pawn. Nice two pawns next to each other. The bishop can be developed to g7. After the move d3, white is threatening to take the pawn on g5. So black played here the move f4, dealing with that threat and attacking the queen. Now the queen comes into e4 and hits the knight on c6. But look here, castling queenside. Black ignores the threat. Bishop takes c6, b takes c6, and look at these ugly doubled pawns. White has the possibility to take the pawn on c6, which is what he did, but in hindsight, look, your king is in the middle. I think it's better just to move the bishop and whenever the king comes under threat, it can still try to hide behind its own pawns. That's a much safer way of playing, but you have to play for a win as white, so it's understandable that MVL accepts the challenge, takes with the queen on c6, but now it's bishop to g4 with check, here you see the king cannot go to the queen side because the bishop is blocking. The king got to stay in the center and now it's queen takes e5. Black is threatening checkmate in one with the move queen e3. That's just very important to neutralize that uh, threat here. Why play the move rook e1 to attack the queen and cover the e3 square? But I want to show you one very exciting line because there's unfortunately no time for white to start giving a check here yourself. That's something you always have to consider, forcing moves, but it's not working now because after the move king d7, the rook hits the queen. Now after queen takes a7, the queen controls the mating threat on e3, but now there's a brilliant move, rook a8. You're about to deflect the queen from covering 
that e3 square. If you do take the rook, it's checkmate on e3 with the queen and the bishop. The white king is caught in the center of the board. Let's go back. Instead of taking the rook, if you move the queen back, now the bishop comes into play with tempo. It hits the queen and the bishop will come to e3. This is just winning for black. For instance, if you set up a counterattack, hitting the black queen on e5 with your rook, the simplest way here to play is to sacrifice the queen. Beautiful queen sack, capturing a piece. After taking back, black takes the queen on f2 and black is just a piece up. That wins the game. But okay, this all didn't happen, but it was a beautiful line. How sharp this Petrov opening is right now. Now, let's have a look. After rook e1, the queen has to move. The queen goes to c5. Black is offering the exchange of queens. Of course, if you do take, I mean, you're pawn down here as uh, black, but with two bishops, and the bishop may be coming to e3, there's plenty to play for here still. So white decided to play more aggressively, keep the queens on the board, giving a check. And after king b8, the knight goes to e4, hitting the queen, also preventing the queen from coming to f2 as the knight covers that square. The queen stays in the center, queen d5, but here white is still struggling to get its pieces into, into the game. I don't like white's position here, but who knows, anything is possible here, white goes for the move a4. So he's planning to play the move queen b5, force the exchange of queens because you're giving a check and after that the rook may be developed via the a file. Therefore, black play the move c6, preventing the check on b5. And now white plays the move b3, very logical move. You're planning to get a bishop out to b2, but it's not a good move actually. Look what black could have done here. Bishop b4 is just... Winning the game for black, you're setting up a skewer. The king cannot go anywhere. If you block with your knight that check, it's queen takes g2 and is going to be checkmate very soon. The main move here is, of course, to block with the move c3. Now it's no longer a check. You're hitting the bishop, but queen takes b3. Look at this, guys. This was not seen by both players. But after c takes b4, black is very close, delivering checkmate by taking the pawn on d3 but the pawn is still defended by the queen what you need to do in such case deflect the defender bishop back to c8 such a difficult move to spot but you're hitting the queen and the white queen is no longer able to keep the pawn defended if you go back to c4 it's just queen takes c4 the d pawn is pinned and therefore you cannot take back the queen if you take the pawn on c6 well then the pawn on d3 is no longer protected and it's checkmate on d3 Simply amazing lines, but don't, don't forget, it's an Armageddon game, players are getting lower on time, and MVL's playing style is just to play very fast to keep the pressure on the opponent. Hikaru played instead the move bishop g7, hitting the rook. Now, of course, you can still play the move c3 with interesting uh, complications, anything can happen, but the rook went to b1. Rook h e8 was played. The rook is coming into the game and you're threatening to take on e4 because the d-pawn is pinned because of the pressure along the d-file. Now white comes back with a queen to c4. White is ready to accept the exchange of queens anytime soon. If you do take, it's b takes c4 with check. The rook is active. White is a pawn up and very soon maybe the pawn on g5 is also going to drop. So that's an important move, but what should black do? Should he keep queens on the board or should he try to initiate new threats? Apparently the move bishop d4 is really strong with ideas to come in with the bishop to e3. Okay, this can be missed by both players. One of the points is that if you do exchange queens, you do take back with the c-pawn attacking this knight on e4. If you do take the pawn on g5, now another insane move to find is rook c8 with the plan that if you now exchange the rooks, you don't have to take back its bishop c3 with checkmate. Look at these bishops and the pawn on f4 covering the e3 square. After rook c8, therefore, you gotta do something about it, Fred, but if you do play bishop b2, it's bishop e3 and white is forced to give up the rook, otherwise it's checkmate. Absolutely insane lines, but so difficult to find. All these problems, they just appear on the board because white kept that king in the center. Now, queen a5 was played by Hikaru. White played the move b4, solving the check, hitting the queen. Black does capture the pawn on a4, but at least there is some time to consolidate your position here. And white played here a solid move, bishop b2. He wants to exchange 
pieces that will make it much easier for the king to handle this situation but let's go back one move this move queen f7 attacking the bishop is so important look if you play bishop b bishop d4 now the knight comes into d6 with insane tactics as you're threatening to take the rook in three different ways but most importantly with his knight on d6 you're threatening checkmate on b7 look at this if you give a check with the bishop on e3 first you solve the check with a rook sacrifice you do take back with a pawn it's another check hitting the king now the king goes away and apparently there's not a good check for black here and the threat of taking the rook and giving checkmate is still there so black has to take on d6 then you take with the queen on e8 with check next the pawn on e3 can be taken white is winning another missed chance first it was black now it's white the game is a little roller coaster. Anything can still happen. Let's back, get back to the action. After queen takes a4, it's bishop to b2. Bishop takes, rook takes, queen b5. Black is offering the exchange of queens now. You can just accept it and try to play on. I think white's central pawns in the long run, they may offer him an advantage. Anyway, white played here to move queen c3. Keeping queens on the board. Black goes queen e5 does offer the exchange of queens one more time and black now faces the move b5 white is trying to play for an attack against the black king what should be played here well black can always go for the exchange of queens and i don't think there are that many problems but instead there followed the move c takes b5 what's happening now white just play the move rook a1 getting the rook involved but hang on for a second if you do exchange queens here look at this you take back with the rook and now brilliant move brilliant shot is knight f6 offering the exchange of rooks you're hitting the bishop as well and after rook takes e1 it's rook takes b5 intermediate check the king has to go away and only now oops sorry only now after the move uh, king c7 you do play the move king takes e1 and well what what's happening here is that the bishop is hanging as well the rook hits the pawn on g5 so white is getting a much better end game with two connected passed pawns in the center absolutely insane look what happened rook a1 instead missed opportunity as you can see what's the trick well you cannot take the knight on e4 here the d pawn is pinned but it's rook takes b5 with check the queen covers the c file the king has to go into the corner rook takes a7 king takes and queen a5 is checkmate absolutely insane mating ideas here therefore black should forget about attacking now he needs to consolidate its position with a move rook d5 he protects the pawn on b5 white wants to play for for a win and goes for the move queen a5 threatening to take on a7 and black instantly protected the pawn with the move rook e7 but let's think for a second hikaru still had more than a minute on the clock he could have paused here for a second and if you tell somebody that there is a winning continuation here for black you will find it because hikaru always looks at forcing moves but why not now rook takes d3 it's the killer move if you do take that rook with the king queen takes e4 king goes to c3 you give a check it's king d2 queen d4 look at the major pieces on the open files in the center king c1 queen d1 with checkmate and the other line is that after taking with the pawn on d3 it's queen takes b2 with check king e1 queen e2 checkmate black is winning missed opportunity but instead black wanted to play it safe played here the move rook e7 a7 is protected as well as the pawn on b5 rook a b1 rook b7 three times attacked three times defended the pawn on b5 rook b4 and now the move f3 is on the board look absolutely insane position black is opening up the diagonal for the queen trying to hit this pawn but if you would play now a move like knight c3 who knows what is happening you're hitting the rook hitting the pawn on b5 I have no idea guys what's this but there follow g takes f3 now the bishop takes and the big difference is that now after the move knight c3 you cannot um well you can play here the move rook c5 attacking this um knight on c3 but there is no defense 
with the move rook e4. That's the move you wanted to play because in the other line, let's check it out. After knight c3, rook c5, there is rook e4 with a counterattack. You're hitting the queen. The queen on a5 defends the knight, so there's no time to take it. That's why you should not have taken on f3. Bishop takes knight c3, rook c5, and black is setting up a lot of threats, including the capture on c3, but also the pawn on h2 is hanging. After the check on d8, there followed rook c8, counterattack, hitting the queen, queen d4, queen takes h2, capturing another valuable pawn, king c1, and look now, position slows down, a6, pawn is defended, look at this, black is just two pawns up on this side of the board, and white is just busted. There followed many more moves, king b2, Queen c7, black consolidates the position, and after rook c1, the queen comes to c5, offering the exchange of queens. The queen cannot go away, as in that case, the rook would be hanging. So queens are coming off the board, the knight went back, but now there are just two connected past pawns. This is hopeless. Knight d2, rook f5, black has a simple strategy of keeping everything protected. And after the move c4, you go back with the bishop to c6, knight b3, Rook d7, remember that the draw is just enough here for black in this game to move on to the next stage. King c7, d4, pawn takes, rook takes. Now, just be careful. The bishop is under attack by both rooks. Rook d6, rook e7, the king goes away. Rook h7, okay, the king is cut off. But how do you create some threats? That's not possible. There's rook b5, rook c5, and you put the pawn on h4. After king c3, Rook takes rook, pawn recaptures, rook goes to g6 and you're about to push the pawns after the move knight d4. Okay, the bishop is under attack, it's still defended and if you really need to play for a win, you probably just move the bishop away. But having in mind that so many crazy things happened in this game, I think Hikaru is relieved just to play for a draw. So that's why he played the move g4. You cannot ignore the pawns. White captures on h4, g3, and now white decides to trade off the knight for the bishop. Rook recaptures, rook g4, rook takes c5, king goes away, and black cannot even defend the pawn. Rook takes, pawn will follow next. It's a dead run, rook endgame, black played. The move rook b5, and the players agree to a draw. Thanks for watching this insane game. I want more of these Armageddon games. Thanks for tuning in. Let me know what you think of it. And of course, make me one favor. Become a fan of Robert Riss Chess channel by subscribing. You're just one click away. And then more exciting games will be covered here for you.